We're here with actor Jose Soto, who daytime fans will recognize from both One Life and Guiding Light. Um, it's just on an episode of Blue Bloods uh, two weeks ago. But there's uh, more, to, more than that on his resume. So Jose, take it away. When did you first decide to become an actor, pursue it seriously, and talk about your experiences? You got it. Well, um, deciding to become an actor, actually, I, I didn't. I was uh, about six years old. I used to go to this place called the PAL. It's kind of like a boys club. And this guy came in, and I used to box as a little kid there in the training room. And I sang all the time. Heard me singing and said, hey, you want to be in a play? I don't know what a play is. But I saw a bunch of little girls signing up. I said, yeah. sure. So I signed up, and next thing you know, I was in a play. Uh, it was called The Twilight Cowboy. It was an off-Broadway play, and I played a singing bartender. And then a week later, I had an agent. And about two weeks after that, I was on TV. So it was kind of just... Right place, right time. What kind of stuff did you start out doing? Uh, everything. On TV. I, on TV, I started out with, uh, it's mostly primetime shows. Like I did movies of the week, remember those back in the 80s and 90s? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did those. Real well. <laughs> yeah, I did all the, you know, the network shows like The Equalizer and uh, The Law and Orders. And, uh, but yeah, that's basically it, primetime stuff. You know, and then you were on One Life to Live for a good span of years, like three years. Yeah, like three, three, or half, so. three years. Yeah, ago. yeah, I did that. I left. Um, I was doing a lot of other stuff. I was doing a lot of theater, a lot of film, and then I left uh, right out of high school. I had an audition for uh, One Life. I went to the studio. Next thing you know, recurring on One Life, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. You were pretty heavy recurring too. Yeah, right? yeah. Especially yeah. with your one storyline. Yeah, it was good. What was it like going from high school to a soap opera like that? And um, being in a heavily featured storyline. Yeah, high school. I went to School of the Performing Arts. The fame school. PPAS. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, LaGuardia, right off. Oh, okay, LaGuardia. Yeah. So I went there, and that was interesting. So going, I don't even consider high school a transitional period into it. So I mean, the big thing about doing soaps was it was nothing like I've ever done before. I mean, it was it was like you're acting, but it's a nine to five job kind of. My I wasn't used to that. The cool thing about it was the studio was only like eight blocks from my house, man. So I used to wake up, walk to the studio, get the script, memorize it, shoot, go home. Yeah. And it was like every day. So it was pretty good. And your storyline for that time was a, a Latino gang and that wasn't really shown too much no. previously on yeah. other shows. So yeah. It was a little groundbreaking. It was, yeah, it was definitely rather groundbreaking for soap operas. I mean, um, you know, I get to the show and I'm the only person that looks like me. So that's always cool, you know what I mean? And then I met uh, Yorlin there, who actually, Yorlin Madera played Christian. I played Eddie Velasquez. I didn't even know he was there. We, we went to high school together. I, I didn't know he was cast as Christian. We Our first episodes, my first episode actually, I got shot or stabbed and I was in a coma. And Christian, my best friend, wasn't uh, in, the, in the episode at the time. It was Dylan and Marty. Dylan and Marty, yep. yeah. Yeah, and they, they ran like the whole center. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. This, yeah. So I was kind of like the bad, cool guy my character was. Like he was the bad guy, but everybody liked him. So it, it was a good time. It was groundbreaking. I mean, I think uh, All My Children had like Mateo going on. Yeah, he was. But his story guy, wasn't, you know, was, you know. So it was good to see like an inner city urban. Yeah. Hispanic story on a soap opera. And people. then you had pretty boy Renee Lavin in there, thrown yeah. in we to have, look like a gang member yeah. with his hair slicked back. Yeah, his hair slicked back. <laughs> and, he, and he, you know, my, my little Cuban brother, he's, you know, like, I'm not that tall, but he was so much shorter than me, but he played it well. He was yeah. great, yeah. Yeah, all you guys had a great chemistry together. Yeah, it was a good time. They brought us together. Um, each came in kind of on our own, but then when we had our first, like, scenes together, it was almost like, I knew this guy for, like, me and Yorlin knew each other forever anyway. Yep. But, like, uh, Angel David, he played my best friend, and, 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 and Renee, and, and Amar. I mean, we were kind of, like, inseparable at the time. I mean, we'd lunch together, we'd hang out, we'd go to parties. And when we were on that set, they, we were yelled at constantly. <laughs> like frat brothers. Oh, my goodness. We would, and then... <laughs> We'd be behind, like, you know, you got the diner, Carlotta's diner, yeah. and we'd be outside the set waiting to make our entrance. They'd have to cut all the time, because we'd be back there just saying, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, cracking up, and they hear us, cut! Would you guys cut it out back there? It was just so cool, man. We had a, I had a really, really good time. After One Life, what uh, did you pursue? Did you go out to L.A.? 
I know you said you were kind of flying back and forth. Yeah, well, during One Life was probably the busiest time of my, of my life, of my career. I was back and forth between L.A. and New York. I was doing so many shows. I was doing, uh, I was on NYPD Blue, New York Undercover, um, Della Ventura, which was a show for a season, Brooklyn South. I was on Oz, and this is all during that time. So after One Life, I just continued that. Then I went back to the theater. I did some theater. Um, what else? And then I had a little stint on uh, Guiding Light. Had a, a few episodes on that, which was cool too. And then as I got older, I went into other avenues. I mean, I'm still doing it, you know, right. I'm still acting, but I just expanded, you know. Right, you're just recently on Blue Bloods. Yeah, I did an episode of Blue Bloods. Um, I recently was in an a independent film, which did really well in the, in the LA Film Festival called uh, The House That Jack Built. Um, it just premiered out yeah, here in New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me and EJ Bonilla for you soap opera. Yeah, fans, EJ Bonilla. Right? That's yeah. why it's familiar. It's a, it's a great film. Check it out. It'll be coming on HBO soon. Um, now, where did you meet EJ? How? On the set of the house that Jack built. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. In there. yeah. I was going to say there is an age difference. Oh, yeah, it's a big age difference. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, hopefully it doesn't look that way, but yeah, there is a big age difference. There. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a good he's a young good, actor. He's a yeah. really good nice guy. kid, good yeah, good actor, yeah. And uh, you know, did that, I'm still still working. Now I'm writing. Um, I'm teaching private lessons. Uh, I'm about to shoot a web series. I'm doing a whole bunch of things. That's smart. Yeah. That's like the way of the future. Yeah, it's the way to go, yeah. Uh, you said you were teaching, where can people hit you up to get teaching? Oh yeah, you can go uh, right to my website, uh, jesoto.com. And right there, it'll link you to everything. It'll get you to my email, my Facebook, my Twitter, all the good social network stuff. Yeah, you're also married with children now? I am, yeah. Is that, not that does it interfere, but does it hinder a little bit of what you can go out for in terms of, I don't want to go to California for a week and do it with my family. Or are you looking to stay closer here and maybe do theater? I, it, I don't want to say hinder. Yeah, hinder yeah, but. Because if I had my choice, you know, if, if I had to choose, and I just wouldn't act anymore. Yeah. But yeah, it, do, it does change or, or, or it there's adds to the decision a, yeah. that you have to make. Yeah, yeah but, but it's a family decision. It's yes, not just yes. So you know, I have a wife, I have two kids. I've been with my wife for 18 years. We've been married 14 years. Um, so, I mean, listen, if it means acting or family, then it's family. And, yeah. You know, it is what it is. But yes, it does, it helps determine what I do and don't do. So I stay here. So are you looking to do theater here in the city? Is it, yeah, I'm always looking to do theater. Um, I'm still part of a theater group where I started off from the 52nd Street Project. I have a own theater. I'm on the board now, so I'm like, wow. I'm getting old now. I started there as a kid. <laughs> That's you know? what that means, right? That, you started yeah. as a kid and I now you're on the board. I started there as a kid. You know, that means I was, you're administrating. Now I'm a board member. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm always involved in theater and stuff like that. But, you know. What was some of the, I know for someone out of high school, back then and even today some soap fans are very passionate about their actors on their show what was it like coming out of the studio and having people approach you when it wasn't something you were used to um it was a little overwhelming like i've been acting since i was six years old mm -hmm. so by the time i got onto the soul i was already kind of involved in the business you know so i get it but the soap fan is a way more intense and open and honest fan than any other fan oh, yeah. I've ever had. And there's more of an access to the actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the actor is usually very, yeah. you know, friendly. So it's... Right. So I, I, I have a relationship. Yeah. There, there, were, there were times you come out... I mean, I'm always kind of, I like to think I'm cool to everyone, you know? I never... Well, we're interviewing your wife tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. She'll, we'll <laughs> she'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's a couple that, you know, would get you a little nervous, you know? So you just got to be careful. I've seen some horror stories, heard some horror stories. Um, but it was... At first, it wasn't overwhelming. It was just like, wow, you know? Me? Come I'm on. Yeah. I'm just Jose from down the block, Hell's Kitchen, you yeah. know? But it, it was pretty cool. It was exciting. I, I, I appreciated it. I respected it. Got a lot of mail, fan mail, people outside, and pictures, and red carpets. It was really cool. What advice would you give to people who are just starting out now in business? Since it is so different from when you started. Yeah, it's nothing like, yeah. When I started, it was kind of like a grind it and get it. And now it's more like a social thing. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Now, I, for people starting out in the business now, I tell them to go get, get some... Just the one thing you can still still remains true is to get the training. You know, become part of some theater group, get some sort of training, get some lessons, do anything you can to do that. But you got to get out there socially. You got to the Twitters, the Facebooks, the MySpace, put together a reel, 
and make a little video and put it out there. Yeah, and it's really important. I mean, if you want to get noticed, you want to get something. Because right now, it's all about. It's all about social media. Social media. media. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it's almost like more reality stuff on TV than there is written stuff. Like, there may be, yeah, actually. So, yeah. And, and right now, I think it's more... The character actor is, 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 is getting more stuff now than, like, the superstar actor. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this, there's a niche for that one person that does this thing well. Like, I think I have the monopoly on the, uh, on the bad guy role. Yeah. Did you ever uh, have any problems being typecast since you were always playing sort of a villainous uh, character? Yeah, over time, yeah. I would, I would get typecast as bad guy well, a lot. Um, in theater, not so much. I, I was able to play everything. Um, on TV and film, usually the bad guy, usually the Hispanic bad guy. That's the one difficulty. Break. I mean, I guess, you know, with the goatee and the bald head, I guess it's easy for them to kind of pigeonhole me as the Hispanic drug dealer. But hey, listen, you know, job's a job. Job's right? a job. And if you can break one mold and get into, if we can be that bad guy and do it so much that they're tired of seeing it, then maybe they'll give us something else. What type of role have you not played that you would really like to? I don't know, man. I mean, see, in theater, I pretty much played them all. Um, I played an AIDS patient, I played homosexuals, I played an Italian, I played a doctor, I played a cop. I guess I'd like to do all of that on, on film. On film, yeah. Yeah, you know, and just show what I can do on film. And what do you have coming up? Uh, is there anything that you would like to promote other than your, I know you're teaching and you're just on Blue Bloods. Any episodic work coming up that you can talk about? Nothing in that, nothing in that realm just yet. Right now I'm still trying to help publicity for uh, The House That Jack Built, the independent film. Right. Um, I got some other things possibly in the works, a couple of internet shows and stuff like that. But that's nice. it, man. Keep us posted on that and we will do uh, updates down will the do. road. Thank you.